Hello everybody, this is KG5IN. Wanted to show you something a little bit about the zoom spot. Um, right here you've got the Raspberry Pi Zero and you've got the zoom spot board then you got the zoom spot itself and I'll be teaching you guys how to quickly set this up utilizing the USB cable. Now I'm using a nice super bright cable here just to kinda uh, show you how it's done through demonstration and then we'll get into the PC and I'll show you how to do some more stuff from there. But the first things first is when you get your zoom spot, it's going to be all in separate pieces. You're going to sandwich it together like this, put your antenna in, and then there's two USB ports. You have one on the right and one on the left. The one on the right is uh, for the power, one on the left is for data. Um, it'll still power off of both, so it doesn't matter. Um, over here on the side, you've got the US, not the USB, but the SD card that's attached. And that right there has all of the information you need. So now to get started, what we're going to do is just go ahead and um, uh, plug in the USB cable. And I'm kind of doing this one-handed with the camera in my other hand. And it looks just like this. Once it's plugged in, you've got a nice little bright orange light right there, and you also have a green LED on the board itself on the Pi Zero. And what we're going to do is literally just wait as it's plugged in, wait a few minutes, um, because the next part is we're going to get onto the PC and look for the uh, Pi Star setup. SSID. And I'll continue from there. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and set up the zoom spot over the Wi Fi. Um, and very simply, so as I discussed earlier before, you have to plug it into a USB port, turn it on, wait about two to three minutes. Then once the zoom spot's initialized and, and stuff like that, you'll be able to see it in the Wi-Fi setting. So if you look down here in the right-hand corner of my screen, and this goes the same for anybody running Windows 7, you're going to click on the little Wi-Fi signal uh, bars, and you'll do a little search through it. You're going to see something that says Pi Store or Pi Star Setup. Um, either one of those are the same thing. If you click on Pi Star Setup or Pi Star, you click Connect, and right here, you're going to type in the password Raspberry, R-A-S, P is in Paul, B is in boy, E-R-R-Y, and hit next. In here, it's saying, do you want to share it? Just say yes. That's fine. That, that part does not matter um, because you're not going to be connected to it for very long anyways. Now that you've done that, um, you're going to be uh, introduced to another screen, okay, that will ask you to go ahead and configure the Pi, Spa Pi Star Zoom Spot. Um, and that's going to be on this next page that I'm going to show you here in a second. Okay, so now I've opened up a web browser and you're going to go to the top bar and you're going to type in http colon slash slash pi dash star that's pi dash s t a r forward slash then you're going to hit enter now you're going to be presented with this thing that says pi star digital voice dashboard for and i've already configured it once but i'm going over this again with you guys now over here it's going to ask for the username and password and if you're using internet explorer it looks like this if you're using chrome or Firefox, it's going to be a little bit different looking, but we're going to go ahead and type in the username of pi dash star, and the password is raspberry, R A S P B E R R Y. Then you're just going to click on OK. Now, this is going to allow you to go into the unit and do some configurations. If you notice here on Internet Explorer, it doesn't show all the details of all the information. So it's suggested to go ahead and use Chrome, but if you have Internet Explorer only, if you notice, you can see some of the stuff as you highlight over it. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up Chrome. I'm gonna go ahead and type in PyStar on Chrome and get that pulled up here. 
we'll go ahead and enlarge this for you. And I'm just going to close the Internet Explorer browser real quick. There we go. Okay, it's going to look just like this. No mode defined. And as you can see, I've already put this information in. So the username again, pi dash star, password raspberry, sign in. And now, as you can see, if you noticed using Chrome, you'll be, you'll be able to see all the details. Okay, so watch out for that. If you're using Internet Explorer, there are some settings that you can change in Internet Explorer, but it's just recommended if you just go ahead and install Chrome or Firefox and work off of that instead. Now in here, you're gonna be able to go ahead and customize it a little bit. See where it says mode call sign or node, sorry. Uh, that's where you wanna type in your call sign. So for an example, mine is KG5IAN. I'm just gonna put that there real quick. My frequency that I use, um, which you can choose anything, but I'm just gonna set it to what my repeater is. I don't know why, I don't know if that's correct, but I'm gonna find out later on. You guys are gonna go and ride with me uh, to figure that out. Over here where it says town, I'm just gonna head and put in my city real quick. And country, let's just go ahead and fix that up real quick. Take out the K, put a USA. So it's gonna be country, comma, USA, or space USA. And then uh, the HTTP colon slash slash www.qrz.com slash db slash m1abc. We're gonna take that m1abc and just put your call sign in there. Now, this URL can definitely be different, but we're just gonna keep it like this. I'm not gonna to touch pretty much anything else. System time zone, just kind of find out what area you're in and what time zone you're in. I'm in the central time zone, so I'm using America, Chicago. Um, then you just hit apply changes. And that, you know, processes and happens somewhat rapidly. There it goes. And you're gonna notice this other screen pop up here in a second. And we're just waiting. And waiting, there we go, okay. So now you get this screen, and if we give it a few more seconds, it says uh, changing our changes applied, starting, and I couldn't finish the rest of that. Click okay on that. Now, what we're gonna do is scroll down to the bottom over here, and this is where we're gonna try to get the Wi-Fi configurations set. So basically, what we're gonna do is look for the Wi-Fi. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Wi-Fi configurations, then I'm gonna click on the button that says configure Wi-Fi. Click on that, and now it brings you to the smaller box in the same area, and it says scan for networks for 10 seconds, add a network, or save and connect. If you already know your SSID and you know it verbatim, exactly word for word, letter for letter, whatever it is, then go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you can just scan. Or if you know you're going to be you know, setting this up from work, but you're going home later on to configure it, but you know your SSID, that's where you do that. Anyways, in here, uh, you're gonna find your SSID. So as if you were searching on your computer for connecting to your internet at home, you're gonna do the same thing here. But in this instance, you're gonna just search for basically the same thing. So my SSID is called Shopkins. I have girls and so I just created my SSID and called it Shopkins. You can laugh all day long. I got another one that's even better, so that's not my SSID. Anyways, <laughs> click on select, and where it says PSK, that's going to be your password. So for my Wi-Fi, I'm going to go ahead and type in my password as we speak, and then I'm going to click on add network. Oops, sorry, not add network. Let's get that back in there. Don't do that. If you hit add network, it's just gonna add another one where you can have multiple SSIDs for it to connect to, which is pretty cool. So if you happen to move it around quite a bit in different places from your vehicle, from here, there, you can add all of those SSIDs and whichever one it finds, it'll connect to. Now we're gonna click on save and connect, which is what I should have done. 
And now, uh, now the SSID has been saved. It should be connecting. Um, for good measures, I like to go ahead and do it a couple more times. Save and connect and let it process. Now, you're going to notice that it's connected to PyStar still. Your, your laptop, your computer is still connected to the PyStar. And you go, well, why is it not connecting? Well, so the trick is, Give it about a minute before you unplug it, okay? But the the way this works is when you hit save after after that, um, I like to give it about I don't know a, a whole minute, you know, before I disconnect it. And so now that I've been talking to you for about a whole minute here, I'll go ahead and unplug my Raspberry Pi from the USB, okay? And let's see, that was a little tough to unplug. I'm gonna wait about 10 seconds before I plug it back in. I'm gonna plug it back in and we wait. Now, this is all gonna disappear or it says Pi Star and all this, or you can just stay on the same page, but you're going to want to go back just a little bit to where it says pi dash star. Just leave it there. And then on the bottom right hand side, we're going to, you know, double check because sometimes what happens is the configuration doesn't complete all the way. Sometimes you have to go back in again and do the Wi Fi setup again. That happens. But. What we're going to do now is just hold out a few minutes. It takes about two or three minutes for this thing to come up and start connecting to the Wi-Fi. And if you notice, on top of the Pi Star itself, there's an orange light, orange indicator light, and then on the inside of the Pi, and that's on the Zoom Spot board, by the way. Now on the Pi, on the Raspberry Pi Zero board, you've got a green LED and you'll start to see a little action but on the zoom spot board itself you'll start to see a little green led kind of doing a teeter-tot going back and forth between dmr and dstar and you'll notice that so you have to look very closely in fact i will record this on my cell phone and show you guys by entering entering this clip in there or inserting is the word i was looking for here we go. I'm recording it now, showing the LED, and I don't know if you can see that, but real close, right there next to the green LED as it's flashing, we'll say DMRD star. As it's flashing, we'll say DMRD star. And that's what you want to look out for. So now what we're going to do is just double check in the Wi-Fi settings, do a little scroll through, go, okay, I don't see it in there. And let's go ahead and try to connect to the Pi Star. So there we go. So I had a successful connection to my Pi Star. Now, if you click on configuration right here, you can go ahead and do some more setups and things of that nature, such as setting up DMR, you know, the DMR gateway, whatever you're using. Okay, for that, and the list just goes on. Now, I don't know how to do this part yet, but a video will be coming soon that will show that. Now, D star configuration, it's already got my call sign information in there. I can choose any letter of the, of the alphabet, pretty much, um, for the repeater one call sign. The remote password, you can change that to whatever. The default reflector, you can change, anyways, you get the idea, so you can change all those. But if you scroll down here to the wireless configuration, which is what we're looking for, you will see uh, the interface status has changed to up. So it says interface is up. That obviously means you're connected and that the Wi-Fi is connecting to your home network or your work network or wherever you're at to that SSID. And if you look over here, connected to, Shopkins, 
and the MAC ID, the bit rate, and that's in megabytes, not megabits, okay? So 65 megabytes per second is actually pretty good. Uh, signal level, you know, I'm not too far away from my, uh, um, I, I wanted to say repeater, I'm not too far away from my um, modem, my router. Anyways, um, so that's pretty much how you do this. If you guys have any other questions on this, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, we'll be going on to other configurations, which is going to be another video coming for that. Thank you so much. KG5IN, clear, and seven threes.